there's two things driving change in in the Amazon. Uh, one, of course, is deforestation through human action directly. That's the most immediate impact. But also, on top of that, there is climate change driving a change in the rainfall. So the rains uh, in our climate model uh, come less under future climate change. It has to be said, not all climate models do that. They do disagree. It's in the nature of trying to forecast weather and climate that there are large uncertainties. Uh, but we've not been able to rule out this projection of a drier climate in the second half of the 20th, 21st century uh, in, in Amazonia. It kind of just emerged that our climate model projections for the globe were showing some very dramatic results for the Amazon. Uh, so that's what drew our attention uh, to that area. We saw this uh, large drying of the climate and very great heating of the climate in that region. Uh, so we started to look at that more and then when we started to combine those climate model projections with vegetation models to see what it did to the forest, we saw the forest becoming unsustainable near the end of the 21st century because of this extreme regional climate change. In, if we carry on with the business as usual emission scenario of greenhouse gases, um, around about 2050 or so, uh, the climate in Amazonia in our model starts to get so dry and so hot that the forest can't really be supported in its present day state so you do start to lose the forest and then as you lose the forest that drives the climate further because the forest plays an important role in maintaining its own rainfall so as you start to lose the forest because of climate change you get more local climate change and that hits the forest even further so you get this cycle effect and then when you get carbon coming out of the forest as well that accelerates global climate change more co2 going back into the atmosphere accelerating global warming if you maintain the pristine forest without any deforestation that makes the forest more resilient against climate change but if you've already degraded the forest because of deforestation that makes this dieback happen earlier and especially with, through the interaction with fire. Fire needs both the, the, the right weather conditions, dry, hot weather, but it also needs a source of ignition coming from uh, deforestation, so the two things act together. It's not inevitable that forest, the forest will die. We can stop climate change by reducing greenhouse gas emissions, the forest dieback due to climate change uh, is not projected until about 2070 or something to really start kicking in, whereas deforestation is happening now. So if we slow deforestation now, we still save 50 years of a carbon sink, uh, and that takes us into the time when climate change can still be avoided. We, c we can see two different futures for the, for the Amazon. On the one hand, if we continue to emit greenhouse gases, this is the whole world emitting greenhouse gases, uh, so unchecked climate change for the rest of the century, and at the same time we have deforestation hitting the Amazon directly, and these two things together could lead to a total loss of the forest by the end of the 21st century. The best case scenario would be the global treaty on reducing greenhouse gas emissions, slowing climate change around the world and therefore reducing climate change impacts in Amazonia and reduce deforestation in Amazonia, keeping the forest there in its own right and keeping it resilient to, to climate change. So that could still lead to a preservation of the forest uh, for the rest of the century. So two extremes and the, the choice is basically down to us. We can choose whether to slow climate change and reduce deforestation or not.